Let's continue learning more functions. In this case, we will be learning minimum, maximum, and average functions. So let me type here in cell NE2 equals, and we're going to use the function here for min or minimum, M I N open parenthesis. And now it's pretty simple minimum of a group of cells, right? So in this case, let's say we want to know the least number of hours worked by employee Rahul in this entire year. So I have to select all the cells in this row so we can quickly select them because we've already learned all the methods how we can select cells very quickly. So I clicked here in NB2 and I'm going to use my keyboard control shift left arrow and that actually selects all the way to the first column A. And we don't want to select employee name, so I'm going to use just the right arrow here. And I took my finger off the control. I still have the shift and I did the right arrow and I was able to deselect this A2. And now I have all the cells selected from B2 to NB2, which is the last day, December 31st. And so I will type in close parenthesis and then hit enter. And now you can see that it is the result is zero. And I'm going to scroll back here. And you can see here that the minimum number of hours worked by Rahul the entire year on a single day is zero. And because there are certain days where Rahul didn't work. And if I want to edit this to another function called max, max will be finding out the maximum value in this range of cells. And now I'm going to hit enter. And the maximum number of hours Rahul worked on a single day is eight. And finally, if we want to do an average, and let's do an average here. And I typed in average because that's the function name, average. And average will return the average of its arguments, which can be numbers or names, arrays or references that contain numbers. So basically, B2 to NB2, Excel is going to calculate the average for that. And that is 4.06575. So another way to verify this would be, let's do a sum function because we already learned how to do it. Select all of them. And that is 1484 hours worked by Rahul in this entire year. And we know that this is 365 days. So if I take this value, which is NF2 divided by 365, I get exactly the same value. So this is an average function which directly gets us the same information. We could also use the sum and then divide it by the number of days. So one thing to remember about this average function is that it actually includes zeros in the calculation. For example, here we already calculated the average number of hours, hours worked by Rahul and we have zeros in in entered in this data, meaning the employee did not work that day, correct? So in this calculation of average, the zero was included. So let's say we remove this by clicking delete, and you can see that the average changes. So what that means is that if you have a blank, Excel is going to ignore that cell and calculate the average for the remaining cells. But if you have a zero, Excel is going to include that cell in the average calculations. So keep this in mind when you're doing an average calculation. If you want to consider zeros as blanks or not, and accordingly, you have to change your data set because if you're using the average function, if there are zeros in your cells, it is going to include that in its average calculation. 